Hey, welcome back. We're going to be building a Elementor website using free plugins. So there is no cost to you whatsoever. Now, I prefer Elementor Pro, okay, because I like to have complete control over everything I'm doing. But the add on I'm using here, QI add ons, is a brilliant, brilliant add on. And this is for those of you out there that can't or struggling to get a license or investment for Elemental Pro. So this is to help you out for that. It is a one page portfolio website we're gonna be building here today. Now, there are gonna be some costs you do have to pay for like your domain and your hosting. After that though, everything we're gonna build here is for free. And I'm gonna very quickly go through the plugins and how we do everything. I am not gonna spend a lot of time on domains and hosting. I'm just gonna quickly show you where to go. You make your own mind up on what to do. So very first thing that I would recommend though, is that you go and get your domain. Now there are many, many places you can do this. So we could go to uh, 123 Reg, um, you know, you, you do a search for your domain and you purchase it and the cost might be, you know, 99 uh, cents or, or, or one pound 20 if you're pound sterling in the UK, or it might be a bit more. Bear in mind though, that what you pay for the first year is a discounted rate. The following year, it might be 14, 15 dollars or pounds per year, okay? But it is a small investment cost. If you're going with 123 Reg, you can also go and get their hosting as well. And so the starter package at 299, which goes up when you get to year two, might be one for you. You get your domain included, you get a mailbox, and you get SSL site security as well. So that might be okay for you. But if I'm honest, I would probably recommend going for SiteGround. Why? Because SiteGround actually are what we tend to use, and their customer support and service is brilliant. Not everyone will agree with me, but I'm not here to convince you. I'm just telling you there are options out there. So you decide what you want to go for. Okay, so again, like I said, I'm not focusing on um, hosting and domains, okay? We're focusing on the website. Now, before you build the website, so you got your domain, you got your hosting. If your domain and hosting is a different place, when you go to your domain, there will be an option to change the name server. So if you get your hosting with SiteGround and you've purchased your domain with 123 Reg, it is dead, dead simple. You get the instructions from SiteGround as well as what to do. It will tell you what codes to put in to 123 Reg. And usually within, you know, six hours, it's done. Sometimes it's half an hour, but they say it will take 48 hours. But believe me, within six hours, the connection's made with the domain and the hosting. Right. Before you build your WordPress website, you must get your images, sort out your wireframe, sort out how you're gonna try and make your website look. So here's a little bit of a scribble I've done, okay, of a potential layout and possibly what widgets I'm gonna use. So have, you know, scribble it down, do it scientifically or however you wanna do it. Once you've done that, um, get your images, right? Get your logo, okay? Because obviously you would have had to have had a logo before you, before you did your domain name, really. You know, try and get your mindset right and then get your images that you're gonna bring through into WordPress. And I would recommend Canva. If you haven't got a Canva account, go for it. The amount of stock commercial free images they have available on here and videos is brilliant. I mean, unsplash.com, Pixabay, there's loads of places out there. But for me, Canva is a big, big thumbs up, okay? And by the way, if you like what you're seeing so far, like, subscribe, and make sure you're followers. We're here to help you, your clients, and your businesses with Elementor and WordPress. I'm Imran Sadiq, part of the Web Squadron, by the way, okay? Um, and this is where we actually created a logo uh, for the portfolio site we're creating. It's just a image of a compass with a bit of a, like a wireframe behind, and I picked some certain colors. I'm gonna leave this open in the background because I need to remind myself of what the colors were here. Now, when you've got all your images, and we actually created about 20 odd images in the end, of uh, we found someone in the footy in the photo section here, and we kept found, finding variations of this person to use on the website. It's a portfolio website at the end of the day, so we need to showcase the person and what they do. But when you've got all those images, don't be surprised if when you download them, especially big horizontal um, landscape images, they might be like 2.5 megabytes in size. You don't wanna load 2.5 megabytes into your website per image. So go to TinyPNG, drop your images in all in one go and compress them. Or if they are in a JPEG format, use compressed JPEG. In fact, you can use this website to convert PDFs into JPEG or the other way around. 
you can use this for PNG as well. Now, once you've got all your images, that's the point when you load them over into WordPress. Now, for those of you that aren't used to using WordPress, let's just go over a few settings, the key plugins, and then we're gonna jump straight into building the website. Like I said, I'm not here to teach you like every little thing about WordPress, only what you need to know to build the best website that you can. So WordPress, when you've done your domain and you've got your hosting, at the point when you're sorting that out, you'll have the option to install WordPress. It might be a button, it might be a link somewhere you click it, two, three minutes later, WordPress is installed fresh out the box, okay? So what? here's a few things you really should do. Scroll down until you get to settings. Go to general, okay? And if you haven't already named your website or your site title or given it a tagline, do that now. Okay, so I'm just gonna call this Web Squadron and I'm gonna call it a uh, portfolio. In fact, I'm gonna change this to be Architext because that's the, that's the name actually of the um, portfolio we're building here. Don't worry about my domain name. This is a test site we're using. Also, what you really need to be doing is make sure that you've got HTTPS as well over here as well. Because sometimes when you've got site security SSL, which is important to have, without that, you will not have the padlock in your top left corner. And that can put people off from trusting your website. Make sure you do that. Put HTTPS in there, okay? And hit save changes. And you probably are gonna have to log in again, okay? So that's now made sure the site has the padlock, as we can see there. And it also means that we now have HTTP, HTTPS in the, in the address as well. In writing, you don't need to do anything in that setting. In the reading setting, this is now important because this is where you're gonna tell the world, the server, what is my homepage. Now I've already created a blank home page and I've put the home page here. But if you hadn't created a home page, create your home page, then come back over here and put select that page in here, okay? I'm gonna create the home page from scratch again so you can see what we're doing. I'm gonna go down to discussion. If you're gonna have blog posts or allow people to leave comments, this is where you can start to decide on, well, do they, does it have to go through moderation or not? I'm gonna say that, well, I'm not actually leaving anyone the option to do that. So I'm gonna say that, uh, any, email me whenever, comment tell for moderation. Well, there is gonna be no option on here for anyone to leave a comment. So I'm not fussed about that. The media, this is massively overlooked by a lot of people. I set all of these to be zero. Why am I setting these all to be zero? When you add in one image, WordPress in the back end of your files will create a thumbnail size, a medium size, a large size, and sometimes five or six other sizes. And you might have six or seven versions of the same image in your files. You'll only see one. So you might go, well, what's the problem? Remember, if in your hosting you were given a certain amount of like um, uh, capacity, gigabytes, whatever, storage, you're now eating into that with every image you add, okay? So I would say just zero that out. You don't need to worry about that, okay? Permalinks. I would always say make sure your permalink is the post name. You don't want your pages or your posts or any aspects of your website to start have random codes so that when you're sharing the link to someone, they get this massive description but they'll, they'll, and they might say, that looks like spam, I'm not clicking that. No, keep it simple and go for the post name, okay? You don't need to worry about privacy and optimize, auto-optimize and optimize Google fonts. They are extra plugins that I'm gonna show you that we're gonna add on, right. So we've covered off the basic general settings. Now let's go into the plugins you're gonna to want to install. Here are all the plugins, there are eight at the moment. And you might think, hey, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Actually, no, it's not. Auto-optimize, we're gonna to use to optimize our website. For the Google Page Speed Insights, to make sure you don't get penalized for having a slow website. This is gonna help you. It is free, auto-optimize. Contact Form 7. Because we're not using Elementor Pro, okay, um, we don't get a contact form with Elementor. So what we now need to do is we have to use an additional plugin. You could use WP Forms, Contact Form 7. They're both as good as one another really, but I prefer Contact Form 7. So there we go, that again is free. Elementor. It is free, okay? Elemental Pro, again, uh, $49 a year, okay? Uh, you can buy 
bigger packages with bigger licenses but elemental if 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 you if you're struggling for the investment cash to get it this is fine to use okay elemental it's free images to webp what this is now going to convert your image that you upload into a webp format it's like taking a big image in terms of the file size and literally condensing it down into like like a tiny size, it's not completely tiny, but it's a really, really good tiny size. And I would definitely recommend you do this. There are tons of other WebP ways to do this. You know, there's other optimization plugins, there's other bits of kit you can use to convert into WebP. But this for me has not failed me in over 70 websites. All right, without fail. So I love it and it's free. OMGF. This is going to link into what we do with Autoptimize in a moment, okay? So what this does is we are going to optimize our website. We are going to remove Google Fonts. Stay with me on this. But we are then going to load back in the fonts we do use. And this is the simplest, slickest way of doing it, okay? Problem free. And I would definitely recommend you get that. Again, it's free. PNG to JPEG. So our images in Canva were two and a half megabytes. When I compressed them, they went down to about 700 kilobytes. PNG to JPEG then takes that 700 kilobyte image and knocks it down to about 250, which might sound big to some people, but that is a big reduction. And then the images to WebP takes it down even further. So again, PNG to JPEG, totally free. QI add-ons for Elemental. This is free. This is like brilliant in terms of the um, widgets and the features it gives you. And we're going to be using a lot of them when we're building our page. WP Fastest Cache. This just helps the caching and the deletion of old versions of your web page existing in the server. OK, when you hear someone say purge the cache, they're basically saying wipe the slate clean. Come on, wipe out, wipe out whatever ghosts are floating in the system. So when I go to your website, I see it for what it is meant to look like, okay? Not what it looked like an hour ago. No, I wanna see what it looks like now. Let me now go through the settings, okay? Let's start with WP Fastest Cache. It's one page of settings. I'm not gonna go through every single one. I would say, take a screenshot, pause the video. Okay, and just and just can't imitate what we've got there, okay? Right, let's now go back a step. We're now going to go to the auto-optimize settings. There's three, four pages now you've got to go through here. Okay. Again, I'm not going to talk through all of them, but have a look at the very first setting. JavaScript. Tick the first three boxes. Okay. Over here, there will be a fourth option. Okay. It'll, it will say JS query, JS query dot min. It will say dot min. Get rid of that one. Okay. I don't have that one in. I don't know why they still have that in there. There's four, there'll be four options. The last one will say min, get rid of it. Down here, I will activate CSS code and I will tick the first three boxes and this one down here, inline all CSS. And over here, you will see WP content forward slash upload. Delete that because I want auto optimize to optimize that as well. I don't want that to be excluded. I want my uploads to fall within here. So delete that out as well. Okay, so again, look at what we've got and my settings. And then down here, optimize HTML code. Yes, tick that. And just make sure the last ones down here are all ticked as well. Okay, I hope that's okay. And believe me, if you're going, wait, when, where, when are we gonna build the page? We're getting to it. Believe me, we're, we're, we're nearly there. Then go to images. Now on images, I will say do um, lazy load images, but, so I tick this box here, right? But I don't want the lazy loading to start until after the fourth image. So I'm saying the first four images on the website do not lazy load them. What lazy load means is that when your website loads, the images come through as you scroll down the page. So they don't all load up in one go. You got a page with 100 images. You don't want to load them up in all one go. Slows the website down. Lazy load means they'll appear as you scroll. But if you're worried about your page speed score, you're going to be adding on a delay to your page loading up because you've lazy loaded. So don't lazy load your first four images. 
or your first six, you want your first four images to appear as soon as someone goes to your page. Otherwise, the top of your page, it will load and then the image appears. Well, that affects your Google page speed score. So take that into account. The extra tab down here, I removed the Google fonts. When I remove the Google fonts, I haven't removed them. It's not like you're gonna go in and go, huh, there's no fonts. The fonts are there. However, when they appear on the website, when you're viewing it for live, sometimes it will default to a standard bit of font, which can be annoying, but we will get around that, okay? Remove the Google fonts. This can increase your page speed score by nearly 20%. This is so overlooked. I, I, I keep going on about this. Remove the Google fonts, okay? It will take your score from 60% to 80. You really wanna be hitting 95 plus to be honest, but it can make a big, big impact. Okay, right. Let's now go back to our plugins. Contact form seven. Well, the settings over here, um, when you start to build a form, this is gonna be the settings with regards to where your emails go. So you will obviously modify the settings in when you edit a form and say, right, any emails that come in, I want that to go to that email address or these email addresses, but that's dead simple to work out. Elementor, are there any settings in here? Of course there are. So even though it's the free version, I will untick this one, okay? Um, so yeah, so if you check this box, okay, your website or Elementor or your page you're building is gonna inherit the colors from your theme. Now you're probably going, what do you mean by theme? Theme is like the, like the foundation of the website or the page. And we use Hello, and I will talk about Hello in a moment, okay? We use Hello and I want to have total control over the fonts and the colors that appear on the website. So I untick that. If you leave that ticked, and it will always be ticked by default, if you leave that ticked, you will regret it, okay? Because at some point, something will update, and suddenly the fonts and colors in your website will change. And you'll be like, what, what happened there? You know, it was fine yesterday, probably because you've left that ticked. So I would untick that, my big tip of the day. Okay, in the style option, you don't need to do anything there. Integration, we're not adding any Google Maps at the moment. Now in the advanced, I'm not gonna load Font Awesome or do anything over here, but in the experiments, I am gonna optimize the DOM output. So how do things render on the screen? How do things appear? Improved asset loading, active. Improved CSS loading. So that's all the code that sits behind the scenes. How do things appear? You don't see the code, by the way, active. Font Awesome inline, active. Accessibility improvements, active. Now, all the other others are up to you whether you wanna go for them, but I'm happy with just those top five, okay? Make sure they are active, okay? Have a look, make sure they're active because it can have an impact on the loading of your website and how things appear. Yep, is that okay so far? Right, again, we are gonna to get to the page, but you really just need to make sure you're covered off with all of these um, plugins. Right, images to WebP. The only setting here is I do not convert to WebP on upload. Because there's a danger that if you have optimization plugins and you say, yeah, do it when we upload, you add an image and you're gonna have three or four plugins all trying to attack it. I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. Well, something's gonna not work right. Something's gonna con not conflict, but it's not gonna give you the output you thought you'd get. So I say, no, don't do this, okay? I will activate this when I want to do it. And basically the way you would activate it is when you've loaded your images, and I'll go through the steps, I would click upload that folder there, because that's where the uploads go. And I say find and convert all images. And it can take about one to two minutes, but just let it do its stuff. And it converts it to WebP, okay? So don't do it on upload. I'm gonna jump down to PNG to JPEG just for a moment. The settings for this, again, do not convert PNG to JPEG during upload. I want to be in control of what it does, okay? And um, yeah, that's fine there. And the way you would do it is you would go in, once you've added in all your images, you want to convert non-transparent images, right? So I would say select all the non-transparent images, click convert, and within like 10 seconds sometimes, it just goes doo -doo 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 -doo, and it converts them. You don't wanna convert a transparent PNG. Why? 
Because if you convert it, it loses the transparency and becomes a white background. So you've now lost the fact it was a transparent image. You know, like here, I've got someone over here, this lady, it's a transparent background. I want it to remain a transparent background. So bear that in mind, okay? And if we now go back up to OMGF, this one I do not do until we've built our page. All right, once we've built our page, now I know the fonts we've used. Now I will locally load them. And it is so slick and quick. Don't you worry about that. Okay, right, we're nearly done. QI add-ons for Elementor. You don't need to touch any settings here. And WP Fastest Cache, we did that. So yeah, okay, I said we're not gonna spend a lot of time over settings and stuff, but I've gone over the key, key things you really wanna make sure you do before you build any website with WordPress and Elementor and anything like that, especially when you're thinking about optimization, right? Okay, right. Now, I've dropped into my media over here, the library, loads of images. And you are gonna notice, like, can you see here, the images here at the top are the same as the images here. And you're probably thinking, why has he duplicated the images? Well, the reason I've duplicated will become clear later on. Because when you build a website, the image you use for a laptop or a desktop screen needs to be modified for a mobile screen. And you might be thinking, no, you don't. You can get away with the same image. Not all the time. Not if you care about how big your website is or uh, how large the the um, content is on the website or the page speed score. Believe me, it can make a difference. What I do is I load one image in and I load them again. So I will always have a mobile version that I can tinker with and I will tinker with it when we decide on what image we're going for. So stay with me on this. So what you do is you go to media library, you click add new, you click select files. And you can either drag them in from your desktop or your documents or however you want to do it. You just drop your images in. And it might take about a minute to fully load them in. And then I drop them all in again to load them a second time. Once the images were in, then I went to PNG to JPEG. And this is where I then converted the images, like I said. Then after that's done, I went to images to WebP, convert existing images, upload, find and convert all images. Yeah, okay, that's about three, four minutes worth of work, but you will not regret it because you will get a warning later on when you're testing your website for how fast it is and what's the score ranking. It's gonna say, uh, optimize images, best to use next generation WebP. And you're gonna go, damn, now I've got to go through all of this and modify things on my website. Do it now, play safe, okay? So look, if I just show you one of these images over here, let's take this image here of this lady. This image originally, okay, was two and a half megabytes. It then shrunk down to be about 800 kilobytes. The PNG to JPEG has knocked off 300 kilobytes. It is still half a meg in size. That is still big, but it is the size and the, the granularity and the quality of the image, okay? Some of the images you get down here are gonna to shrink to be even smaller. Like that has shrunk down to be 273 KB. So the PNG to JPEG is great. The images to WebP takes it down even further. You don't see the WebP file size here, which is a little bit annoying, but trust me, it's done. Right, let us now go through the final, final thing, which is the theme we're using, and then we're gonna build the website. If you go to appearance and you go to themes, when you first load up um, a WordPress, WordPress will say, what do you wanna use? And they give you loads of templates. Don't be fooled into picking a template. Don't sit there spending an hour or two going, well, what template do I want to use? No, don't do that. Just pick the, 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 the plain um, um, default one. So at the time of this video, it would have been 2021. Just pick that because you're going to replace it anyway when we get into WordPress. We're going for hello. We're using the hello theme. Why? Because it is basic. It's built by the Elemental team. I'm happy with it. Just go with it, okay? QI add-ons do also have their own theme as well, but because I'm used to Hello, we're just gonna use that. But QI, who we're using in addition to Elemental, have loads of themes as well. So jump onto their website, see the link I've put there, um, or for the plugin, um, and go in and, and have a look at that, okay? It's a, it's, the theme is pretty good. But Hello, for me, is really simple. Lots of videos out there will be using Astra, 
Ocean WP, Generate Press, and other ones as well, uh, Cadence. Just stick to hello, all right? I, I'm sorry, uh, I might sound like I'm biased, but based on what I've used in the past and from experience and things, I just um, I just kind of like to say, just, just stick to hello, okay? Sorry about that. So what you do is you would go to add new, you would search for themes, and I'm gonna search for hello. Don't use hello parents or hello this or hello fashion. They are not the official hello, all right? Do not be fooled into that. You want to be using Hello Element, Hello Elemental. You install it, and once it's installed, you will then have the button here that says activate. You activate it, and then it is now active. Now what we need to do is customize this, but because it's Hello, there's not a lot to customize, and that is a good, good thing. Trust me, it's really good that you don't have loads of stuff to do. Ignore this page. This is a fake blank page that I was messing around with. Ignore this, okay? Ignore that. What you do is you go in over here and you now add in your logo. So I'm going to click select logo and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to pick this as the logo. Okay. I'm going to move myself out the way just over here. Select. That is now the logo. Now it's going to say to me, do I want to crop it? I'm going to skip cropping because I want the logo to be that as it is. I'm now also going to select the site icon and the site icon is your favicon. So when you create your logo in Canva or Photoshop or Photopea or wherever you do it, paintbrush, you create one logo for your website, but make sure you create another one, 500 pixels by 500 pixels, because that's what's going to appear over here, uh, the little symbol you have next to your website. So there we go, we've picked an image. I didn't mean to crop, but it doesn't matter because it's a square anyway. Look, now we have our image over there. And it's now already changed it at the top as well. Okay, right, let me just get rid of Canva over here. Tiny PNG and compress, right. So we now have our logo. So now I can decide to change my site title and uh, tagline again. Obviously it was uh, in the general settings, settings general, sorry, for WordPress. Okay, we're just gonna click publish now. And that's all we're gonna do for the site settings, all right? It's just for the favicon and stuff like that. Now let's build the page and again, I'm sorry, okay, if you thought we would be doing that straight away, but I feel like for those of you out there that are not familiar with WordPress or Elementor or anything like that, you wanna get your head around the settings, all right? Because it can make, big, it will make a big difference, I'm telling you, right. We're gonna go to pages and I'm gonna click all pages, right? So WordPress, right hand side, we're gonna go to pages, all pages. There is already a home page there. I am going to trash that and create it from scratch. We're going to click add new and you will now be taken to the default WordPress window. Don't worry about this, okay? All you have to do here, well, there's two things you need to do. Number one, give a title, home. And now I'm going to click edit with Elemental. That's it. Home or whatever title you want, you know, like um, amazing website or whatever you want to call it. And then hit edit with Elemental because we're building an Elemental. Now, automatically, it's brought over my logo. It's brought over the word home as well. But right now, it's looking really ugly. Um, if you had other plugins or you were using Elemental Pro, we would create a header and a footer, okay? And we could now create the header to be exactly how we want. We wouldn't be using this layout, not at all, okay? We would be getting rid of that. And once we build our own header, it will automatically replace that. You build a header, it will automatically replace that. Don't worry, okay? But because we're gonna be building a one-page portfolio website, I'm gonna go over to the settings button down here, okay? And I am going to say hide title number one, and I'm gonna change the page layout to be Elemental Canvas. Watch this. That logo just because we loaded it has now disappeared because we're going to add it in again the way we want to and the way we want it to look okay i'm now just going to click publish now before we do anything else right now okay we need to just put into what i call the global colors so what is the color scheme that we're going to be using throughout this website over here we have the hamburger you click that and you have an option called site settings let's click that and we go to global colors. Now, there are loads of other options here. Site identity, background, layout, typography, buttons, images, duh, 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 duh. You don't need to worry about those. And I do find that if you start to mess around with things like typography and global fonts, 
you will actually get a little bit confused with what is doing what. It happens, okay? So I say do your fonts on the page. It's just me, it's the way I build and it works for me and others as well. But I am gonna go to global colors. So we have some standard colors here, primary color, secondary, text, accent. Now the text color, I'm gonna slightly darken a bit there. The secondary color, I'm gonna leave. Now the primary color, what should we pick? We can pick whatever color we want, okay? But rather than picking anything we want, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna pick up this code here. And I now want my primary color to be that red. And I'm actually gonna do the same for my, um, the, 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 the secondary color as well. I'm gonna do a slightly darker shade of that, like something like that. There we go, all right? Now for my accent color, do we want an accent color? Well, there isn't really an accent color, but what we'll do is we'll pick one of these grays up. So what I'm doing is using colors from my logo to kind of start to define a color scheme. I'm gonna add in another one and I'm just gonna do F3, 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 because it's a very light um, gray color you can see there. I'm gonna add in another color, I'm gonna pick pure white, and I'm gonna pick another color, I'm gonna go for pure black. And right now, I'm gonna, in fact, I'll add, I'll add in another gray just in case I want to use it. And I'm gonna go D0, 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 CE. Okay, there we go, yep, yeah, that's done there. So there you go, we've got a slightly different color. You can't reorder them, by the way. So think about the order you do them in, but I have some grays, I have a black, white, and we have a couple of the red, peachy, pinky, reddy toned colors that I've got in the logo, right? Okay, so that's my color scheme, and I click update. Why is that important? Well, if at any point of time I decide, ah, oh, I'm not going for red, I'm gonna go for yellow, some sort of tangerine color, I go to global colors, I change this primary to be tangerine, and everywhere I've used that primary color, will change to tangerine. It's brilliant. It's like a really efficient way of building your website rather than, oh my God, I've got to go through one by one. Yeah, you could say the same for global fonts. Believe me, I have found that sometimes it becomes a little bit tricky and I would prefer just to do it on the fly, okay, as I work through the website. Okay, so we hit the X and we're now back to Elemental. On the left-hand side, we have loads of icons or widgets sorry, not icons, widgets or elements that you can use to build your website, like image, video, header, text, icon, maps, things like that. We then also will have the QI add-on elements. Now down here, we do have loads of pro add-ons, pro elements, sorry. The pro elements for Elemental, we cannot use because we're not using an Elemental Pro license. But like I said, $49, you get tons and tons and tons of features, you know. But we also do have the QI add-ons over here, so we can get by with some of the um, widgets and elements that we get with them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna create a header, right? So I'm gonna click over here on, let me get this all the way to the top. We're gonna click on the plus sign, okay? And when we click on the plus sign, it's gonna say, right, what is your structure? Do you wanna have one column, two columns, three columns, four, da 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 da, da you know, slightly different layout? or we could hit the gray folder. And when you click the gray folder and you go to blocks, okay, so let me do that again. You go to you go to gray folder, blocks. I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna click header. Now, all of these are pro, okay? None of these are going to be basically um, free for you to use. You gotta get the Elemental Pro if you want access to these. You can build them yourself, okay? Don't worry about that. But here's a way that if you had Elemental Pro, you could get them. But we're doing this for free. So we're going to build one from scratch. What we're going to do is we're going to go for a two-column header. So we have one section. This is the section, right, the blue outline. Inside, we have two rooms, two columns. The section is your house. The columns are your room. We have two rooms. The, when we add elements, that's the furniture within the room, the layout. Okay, I'm going to go to this section. Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna say is I want this to be full width. I want this to go across the width of the website, or I could go boxed and say, actually, I only want it to be uh, 600. Can you see there, the two boxes now? It will never be wider than 600 pixels, pixels of your website. So have a think about the layout of your website. Do you want it to be all the way or a certain amount? I mean, if I'm not doing full width, I tend to go with 1,200. 
because that's quite reasonable based on different laptop screen sizes and things like that as well. But if you want to go all the way across, let's just go for full width, okay? Now the columns gap, I'm going to set as no gap because I want to have total control over the spacing. No gap means the rooms are right up against the borders of the house. There's no insulation. There's no cavity wall. It's right up against it, okay? The height, I could fit to screen. So that entire section now fits to the screen. Maybe you want a massive banner or big introduction, or you want to go for a minimum height. So you want it to be as big as that. So what the content within there will be a certain size. I tend to set this to zero. Again, because I like to have total control over the layout in how I'm going to present it and what the height of it will be. I'm now also going to say that the vertical height is middle. What I mean, sorry, vertical align. What I mean by that is when I add stuff in, content will be set into the middle, okay? If I pick top, and I'll do it in fact, let's pick top and let me in increase this size over here. Sorry, it's not vertical align yet, middle. Sorry, it's here, column position. Duh. Column position, if I put column position to the top, every time I add content, it starts at the top of the section and comes down. If I do bottom, they start at the bottom, and as you add content in, it will start to fill upwards. I, I prefer to go with middle, so everything sits in the middle. Of course, it depends on your spec and what look you're trying to go for. Let's just put this back to minimum height of zero. Now let's go to the style. Now for the background style, we could pick a, we could leave it as a white color. So we could say, right, we're gonna have this as a white color. Now I could, if I want, pick the color generally, right? I could do that. Or, or I could pick a custom color, which is one of our global colors. So I'm gonna go in and pick white. That means the background of my section is now white. Don't assume it's white because it looked white already. No, that's actually transparent. So make sure you've picked the right color scheme you want. Or we could go for black, or we could go for pink, whatever color we wanna go for. I'm gonna go for white. Now, we could also add in a gradient. So I could go to gradient and I could say, right, gradient is a mixture of white and pink, okay? I could even type in 50, like so, 50, 50, and I now have a white upper and a pink bottom to that section. I could even change the angle and do stuff like that if I want. But I'm gonna leave it as just a plain white background. You can add an image as well into the back as well. So I could go over here and I could say, let's just pick this image here, right? You're probably not going to see it actually because the delay the, the, it's so tiny. There you go, look. So right, right now I've added in a repeating color scheme, which it looks ridiculously rubbish. So let's just go get rid of the image and just leave it as a plain white background, okay? Now what we're going to do is add in our logo. So I'm going to drop into here, image. You can add in site logo. I prefer just to go with image, okay? So there is an option for here. If I just go here and I type in site, you will have the site logo, but that's currently locked because it's you're not part of Elemental Pro yet. So I just drop in the image. Let me do that again. Over here, image, I pick it up and I drop it, like so. We get a massive image. Looks ridiculously rubbish, doesn't it? So let's just click that and let's now pick our logo. There it is. So now we get our logo. Well, that's looking a little bit big, I think, for the website, don't you? So I'm just gonna go here and set the image size to be full. Now you're probably going, hold on, you just said the image is too big and you picked full. Yes, because if you pick a different size, it sometimes blurs or slightly affects the quality of the image. Go for full because you want the full resolution. You want all of that coming through, okay? I'm gonna align it to the left. I'm gonna go to my style now. And this is where I get to now decide, well, how big exactly do I want it? So for the width and the maximum width, I've picked pixel. If I go for percentage, let me do it, and I say 50, and I do 50, it will always be 50% of the width of that column. So if I now start to increase the size of the page, do you see that? The logo expanded, it got bigger which might be fine if that's what the look you're going for, but what if you want the logo to always be a certain size? It's fine, I go to pixel, right? And I now type in, um, let's go for 300. 
and I put 300 in the maximum width as well. Can you see that? We have a slightly reduced size and I'm going to change this to be 250 and again put the max to be 250 as well. Again it is shrunk down. So now even when I view it on a bigger screen it did not expand. Did you notice that? It stayed consistently the same size. Right? Dead dead simple. I'm now just going to go over and pick to this column here. We've got two columns. We have a, uh, an intersection in the middle. I'm going to pick this up and just drag it a bit. It doesn't have to be a 50%, 50% supersized column. You know, I could go over to section here. Go back to layout where we did the full width and the minimum height set to zero and all of that. And down here we have structure. I could click here and say 6633, 3366 or 5050. No, we're going to go for 3366, I think. I think that's fine. And in fact, I'll probably going to shrink it even more. It doesn't have to be that big, you see. Now at the top, we're also going to add in some buttons. Well, not buttons. We're going to add in a icon list, which will act like a button to feed into our one page layout. OK, so don't worry about that. Yep, one page layout. And we're also going to add in some social sharing icons. So let's do that now. If I go over here and I type social, we have social icons. We'll drag that in. OK, and I'm just going to drop it there. And we have social icons. We can add, we can modify these and say, I don't want YouTube. We'll get rid of YouTube. And instead, we are going to go for uh, Instagram. There we go. We'll add an Instagram and click insert. Let me get Instagram. LinkedIn. There's tons and tons of options for you here. OK. What you would do for each one of these is go in and put in your URL. So whatever is your address for, wherever is your Instagram account, you're going to stick that in there so that when people click that, it will take them over there. OK, you can, though, when you do the link option, click this cog here and say open in new window. So if they click Instagram, you don't want them to close your website down and disappear. You click Instagram and it takes them to Instagram. OK, so you got two options there. OK. Right. So. The color scheme now at the moment, I'm going to pick this to be circular because it doesn't really matter. And I'm also going to say it's going to be three columns. You might go, well, what's wrong with picking auto? Sometimes when you pick auto. It looks like three columns or three uh, icons, but sometimes on different browsers or wherever you're viewing your website, it might squash them together. So if you've got six um icons put pick column six all right if you've got five pick five we're going to go for free for each one of these you can set the color scheme you can set an, an official color or a custom color but rather than doing it individually i would say you go to style right you go to the color and we say custom and i'm going to say the primary color is white in fact no the primary color is going to be that color there, the pinky red color. And the secondary color in the middle is white. And then I'm going to scroll down over here to icon hover. Now, when you hover over it, I want the primary color to change to a black. So watch this. When I hover over it, it goes black. But what if we want to be really, really simple? So I'm actually now going to just say leave it as white. And when you hover over it, I want it to go black like this. When I go back to my icon, I want the primary color to be white and I want the secondary color to be pink. So now look what happens when I hover over it. We get a bit of a hover effect going there. And that was dead, dead simple to do. Add it in my icons, you add in your address, I then modify the color scheme. If I go down here, I can increase the size to be however big I want. We'll leave it at that. I can add in some padding as well for how close, you know, they, they're going to, you know, like in terms of the circle they were within. And I can also start to mess around with the spacing and we'll leave it like that. OK, I mean, that's pretty good as it is. Great. Now, if I go over to here, so I'm still on the social share icons, I can now decide if it's going to be left, center, or on the right hand side. And I think on the right hand side works pretty well for us there. We are going to add in some buttons, though, by the way. Um, for how this is going to work. So we are going to have some sections. Now, there are different ways to do this. You could add in a navigation menu. So let me just click update and show you what I mean. OK, no, we won't do that. You could add in a navigation menu, but because this is on one page, we don't need to do that. We could add in buttons. 
individual buttons and each button will take us up and down the page we're going to be looking at. Again, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is use the icon list over here. I'm going to pick this up and just drop it over there. It currently sits underneath the social sharing icons. The layout I'm going to make in line like that. Do you see that? It's no longer a vertical, it's now a horizontal line. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get rid of the, um, I'm just going to get rid of these two options as well. I've got rid of the icon there. So rather than me having an icon listed next door to the wording, you can have it if you want. I got rid of the icon for it. I'm also going to change this to be called home. Okay. This is going to be a link to the top of the page, but at the minute we don't have anything to link to. So I'm going to leave it as it is at the moment. Okay. We are then going to go to the style. And I'm going to say that the um, we're going to set the alignments to be to the right alignment. OK, do we want to add a divider? No, we're not going to add any dividers in. And I'm going to change the text now. The text color is going to be that. So it's a it's like a, a darkish gray color. I'm going to now set the typography. And this is where I'm going to pick Montserrat. There we go. Montserrat. OK. And this is where I'm going to set the size. You could, if you want, just drag this and set the size to be how you want. I really do recommend that you use EM because EM makes the text responsive to the size of the screen. So with the logo, we're setting it to be a set, you know, size. But I would say for anything where you're using text, please, please use EM or REM. OK, EM is what I use. Others use REM. And I'm going to just type in one. And now if I increase by decimals, I can now see the size. So I'm going to go for, let's go for 1.4. Okay, there's my size. The weight of this, I'm going to set to be 500. So it's a bit thicker. I mean, look, look what happens if I go for one. Nice and faint. You can hardly see it. What happens if we go for 900? Very, very bold. So you have these different levels of boldness. I mean, you know, in Word, you pick bold, you get one size, unless you pick a different font. Here you can start to customize the different uh, levels you've got. Don't overdo it and try to put every style and variation of a font on your page. Pick a couple of styles or one or two and just run with them, okay, and try to be consistent in what you pick. Now, what happens, though, when you um, go to here? So at the moment, when you go to this text, when you hover over it, is there going to be another color? Well, I think we should go back to the pink color. Well, maybe we should have actually, you know what, we've done this wrong. Pink should be the standard color. When you hover over it, it goes to that dark color, right? So there we go. We get that dark color appearing there. All right. So we've got a bit of consistency going in the color scheme. Now let's go to the content. I'm going to duplicate this one. Duplicate again, duplicate again, duplicate again. I'm going to change this one to be uh, services. Change this one to be uh, about. Change this one to be reviews. I'm going to change this one here to be contact. I'm going to hit update. And look, it, it changed before our very eyes. But can you notice what's happening, though? Every time you add something in, it drops in below the item above. That's now increased the height of my header, which you might be fine with. I, though, I'm a bit like, no, I don't really want it to look like that. I actually want the social sharing icons to sit after the menu I've created then. It's not even a real menu yet because it's not linking to anything. If you go down here to Navigator, okay, you will now see Section, Column. Look what happens when I click Section, Column 1, Image. Yeah, we knew that. Column 2, Social Icon, Icon List. I'm going to pick up Social. I'm going to drop it below there. Now it's below, but I want it to be next door to it. Okay, well, let's have a look at that. If I go over to my header and I go to advanced, I will have a positioning option. So I went to my icon list, the menu. I went to the advanced tab and I went to positioning. And I'm going to set the width to be custom. Look at that. As soon as you do that, it's, it moved a little bit. It moved all the way over there. Let's now go to the social icons. I advanced. Positioning, custom. Oh, hold on a minute. They are now in line. Hmm, we're nearly there. 
Now I'm going to go over to the column. You can either click it here, the black box there, or you can click it down here. It's up to you how you want to operate. In the column, I have the options for the horizontal line. If I go for end, they've gone all the way to the end. And that's exactly what I wanted. Or I could have gone space between, space around, or space evenly. Let's just go for end. That is now right up against there. But the contact is too close to the Facebook that you think. So I'm going to now click on the icon list or the fake menu. If we go back to the advanced tab again for the icon list, I'm just going to zero the margin and zero the padding, right? If I start to increase the margin for that, watch what happens when I type 100. It's moved it 100 pixels away from the top. And it now looks really odd. Let's put that back to zero. If I do, um, in fact, if I do bottom 100, it stays at the top and it moves everything else because it's creating this like space below and it starts to move everything down. Let's leave that as zero as well. What I'm going to do is on the right hand side, I'm going to just add in about 20 pixels. There we go. So by adding in 28 dead space after the icon list, because it's the right hand side, we're now 20 pixels away from the social sharing icons. That now looks pretty reasonably okay. So if I now click the chevron here, this is how it's going to look on a normal page. Now there is one little problem with this. The logo is touching the top. Why? Because we have no gap. So let's add in a little bit of a gap. If we go to the section, and you can click it there in the navigation or up here, or the section we go to advanced. I am going to zero out the margin and padding because I want full control. If I do this and type in 100, it is now 100 pixels away from whatever was above. But if you look at this logo, it is still up to the edge of the section. So I don't want to touch the margin, okay? I want to touch the padding. So what I'm going to do over here is, well, the padding is the insulation within the room. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say uh, 10. I know, did you see that? Look, look at, this, look at the top of that architect, the compass. 10, slightly moved down now. But the bottom is still zero and the left and right are still zero. So if I click the link button, it now links, it repeats that value all the way around. You can either unlink it and do it individually, or you can link it and have it activate all in one go. So if we now look at our header, we have a bit of white space going around. Okay, that looks cleaner, that is better. Now, before we build the rest of the page out, and this is where we're gonna fly through it a little bit more, we need to now stop and think about, well, how is this gonna look on a mobile screen? The biggest mistake a lot of people make is you build your website, and then you start to work on the mobile version. Well, I say no, do that as you go along. Because when you do one section, you can start to repeat it for the other sections. So, let's click update. Do hit update regularly. Down here, we'll have an icon called responsive mode. You click that, and you have a button at the top for mobile. Ta-da! I would always say that change the width of your mobile to be a minimum of 378, because that's the iPhone XR, okay? And it's a reasonable size to go for in terms of mobile, because then everything bigger than that kind of gets covered as well. Now, you'll see here that the mobile mode, we have, the, we have a section. Column one is above column two. So the layout now looks really, really odd. There are ways that you can play around and mess around with this. Now, here's the trick, okay? I'm going to go with column one, and in the layout, I'm gonna change this to be uh, 40%, okay? 40% width. And I'm gonna to go to now column two, and I'm gonna make that to be 60%. So what we now have is both columns are now next door to one another. It still looks bad. It still looks rubbishly wrong and awful, okay? But that is one thing you could do. However, another better way of doing it, in my opinion, okay, let's make sure we get this layout right. Yep, so column one, okay, is that you could now change that logo. So what we could do is we could go over here. We could now go to the width of this 
and we're going to put it as percentage. And I'm going to say make this 100% of the width of that column for the mobile. You have a mobile icon here. So on the desktop, I was very, I was very specific over the size. But on the mobile, hey, let's relax a little bit, okay? It's allowed to be 100% because the mobile one, I'm, I don't mind if it grows and shrinks a bit according to the column size on the mobile. So now that is sorted. But we still have this problem over here because now the wording for the, um, the menu that we have here just isn't really good. It just isn't working for us. Now, this is where the icon list isn't the greatest thing to use because right now the words are all going to be scrunched up. So we have the option of shrinking the words in the typography, okay, and having it show below, okay, or we can use a completely different way of doing it. And we might then use the menu appearance. So stay, leave this as it is. We're not going to mess around with this because I just want to show you how you could use the icon on this. But what we are going to do is the menu appearance. But we're going to do that right at the end. And then we will sort out this navigation bar at the top. Okay, so let's just click update. And the reason why I don't want to do it now is because I just wanted to have a menu at the top just so you understood what we're doing and another way of how we could have presented this. Right, let's now start building the damn body of this website in the section. First thing we're going to do is add in a bit of a hero section. The hero section is going to be like an image. It's going to kind of showcase um, uh, who the website is about because it's someone's portfolio, architects, or it might be their company or something they're showcasing. And we want to get over some headline text something that's gonna like relate to the keyword or something that's gonna say, hey, look at me, here I am, kind of thing. Please don't leave this website, take notice of me because I'm here to help you out. Okay, so I'm gonna click over here. Remember though, if you've got Elementor Pro or anything like that, you can use some of these blocks. If I go down, there will be some available here in the hero. So here's a hit block that you could use. Um, I think there's some over here as well. So I click that. You could click insert and it will insert that and the image. All you've got to then do is mess around with the text and the images behind it. But rather than do that, let's create one from scratch. So we are going to add in over here. Um, we're going to add in a one section with two columns. We're kind of repeating what we did before, right? So what I'm going to instead do is just duplicate the section above. But I'm now going to get rid of all of this content that we had in here before. Let's move myself down. But let me move myself down even more. I'm disappearing off the screen. There we go. Right. So and we're going to get rid of that as well. So what I've now done is um, we'll just move that to the middle. We've now got a repeat of the section above. Why is that kind of good? Well, it kind of starts to maintain some of the sizing and layouts that we have as well. Then again, though, we could have just done it straight from scratch. So like, what was the point of that? What I'm now going to do is add in a image on the right hand side over here. Two ways you can do image. We've already seen how you can drop an image in, but we could also add in a image um, behind as well. So I could drop an image into the column, sorry. So I could go over here to style and I could give it a color like so. So you're only coloring one column or I could have gone over here and picked an image like so. Like that. Right. And you can't see the image because there isn't any other content. You've got to expand on the content within to fully see the image. What I'm going to do instead, though, is add an image to the entire section. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to style for the section. I'm going to click choose image and I am going to pick uh, one of these images here. And I think I will go for. I will go for I'm going to go for this image here. Yeah, that one. Now, at the moment, you can't fully see the image, and that's because we don't have any content in there at the moment. So let's just add in a bit of content, and then we'll play around with the image again. So I'm going to drop in a header, and the header is automatically a red color because it's the primary color. So let's go to style, and let's just change that to be a black color like so. OK, and I'm now going to go back over to the header, and I'm going to change this to say, uh, I'm going to change this to say Natalie Sawyer. I don't know anyone called Natalie Sawyer, by the way. I'm just making this up. We can align it because it, at the moment it's within column one. I can go to style, typography. I'm going to pick uh, Montserrat. 
and I'm going to change this EM to be a uh, three like that. And I'm actually going to put this as a 500 as well. So there we go. We have a we have a title in there. Okay. I'm now also going to duplicate that like so. So when you duplicate it, it just duplicates it for you. Or you could add one in from new. I'm now just going to change this one to change it to architect or um, uh, I'm going to change this to be award. Award winning architect. Like so. Let's just increase the width of this a little bit as well. Award winning architect. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to Natalie Sawyer. In fact, no, I'm going to leave this award winning architect. I'm going to change this to be H1. H1 has to contain a keyword. So let's say when we eventually push this through site engine optimization and, and submit to Google, we were probably going to have the words like award winning architect was one of our keywords. So we're going to do that. So, I've, so at the minute, it's the same size, but it's H1. I'm going to go to typography. I'm going to change this to be a two. And I'm just going to increase it a little bit like that. And I'm going to change the font of the weight of this to be about 600. There we go. So we've got a bit more, we're putting a bit more emphasis on the boldness, but it's a slightly smaller size for award winning architect. OK. And then underneath here, OK, I'm now going to add in some text. So we click the grid so we can see all the elements. And I'm now going to drop in text editor. OK. And I'm not going to really mess around with what the text is, OK? Because this, I'm just putting in fake text here, OK? What you could do is go over to Style. So, you know, here's where you're going to modify your text. You go to Style, you're going to modify, well, OK, what is it? What, what colour is the text? What's the size of it? Are you going to add any shadows to it? What's the alignment of it, OK? You kind of decide on the look you're going for there. But what if we'd use a slightly fancier widget? So let's get rid of the text one here, OK? And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type in highlight. So highlighted text is QI add-ons. Let's just take this text and dump that into there. So now we get the lorem ipsum, OK? But at the moment, it is saying highlight text in position 3, 5, 3 to 5, so dollar sit amet, and then whatever starts at 9 to 11, so Morris Tempers Nisu. I don't even know how to pronounce any of these, but anyway, um, okay, so you could start adding certain types of text. So I might say, actually, I want to highlight everything from 5 to 12, comma, then highlight everything from 30 to 34, 35 even. There we go. So we can start to highlight it's a text like that, which means that we can put a little bit more emphasis on certain types of wording. This is a wonderful, wonderful feature that I just think is great. What about an appearance? Is it going to appear in a certain way? So it might be the text appears like that. So when the page loads, it now, look, let me do that again. So I know it will just be there. If you go for yes, hey, this is good. You know, and, and you know, it's like, um, I mean, I would say just leave it as default like that. You do have some developer tools and stuff, but don't mess around with that. So we might add in a bit of animation like that. OK, and we've got our text, obviously style of the text. Well, we can align it. We can decide if it's a H1, H2 or just a paragraph. I think I would probably say put it as a H2. OK, because that then means that, again, it can be useful for part of your keywords. OK, text color will make it our gray color like that. The typography, well, we're going to go with uh, Montserrat again, like that. And this time the EM size, I'm going to go for 1.3. 1.3, we'll go with 1.3, OK? Um, we're going to leave the weight as uh, 400, OK? And if you scroll down, you will have other options as well. You can style it. So is it all going to be uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, normal? You know, you decide on that. The style, italic, you know, like that. Um, line height. Look what happens when I increase it. It now starts to increase the height of that. So we're just going to put this as 1.5. And what about letter spacing? Look, you can even increase the spacing in the letter. I'm going to leave that to be 1. OK, so there we go with a little bit of funky dory highlighting. But we can also go further. So I might say, actually, the color of the highlight is going to be a red color. And the text color will be uh, white inside of it. And will there be any padding? Because can you see it's quite, at the moment, it's very close to the wording. 
So I'm just going to say, yeah, on the left, we'll add in a little bit of padding there, about four. And on the right hand side, we'll go about four as well ish, like that, something like that. And the top and bottom, I'm just going to give it about one and a, yeah, two. Let's go with two. There we go. No, we'll go with one. One at the top and two at the bottom. So play around with it to get the look you want. So let's now click update. So what I did is just to get the color to work was I just clicked back into here and then the color came through again. So a little bit of a glitch there, but if the color doesn't appear, just click back in again and then it reappears. So how does this look right now? Now, one thing I would say though is that when I do this and view it, the text at the moment is going to go beyond the logo because it's it's at the minute not been set to be a full width or anything. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to change this to be a boxed and put it as 1200 like that. So what that now means is that any content that sits within here, it's all going to sit within a certain like column of activity as it is, but the header at the top can still go all the way across to the top. Okay. Now this bit of text here, I will say though that the plant behind is slightly affecting how we can see it. So if I click on the highlighted text again, so we've got all of our colors and everything we've picked. If I go to advanced, okay, and I go to background, I'm going to go for background type and I could put an image. But I'm just going to pick in a white color like so. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the color, right? So I've picked white, but now I'm going to click specifically on the color. And down here, I can actually just um, uh, mess around with the transparency. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of transparency like that. OK, just so you can actually see the text a little bit better. Actually, probably something like that. OK, and I'm also going to go to the border and I'm just going to um, give this a little bit of a rounded border as well of about 20, just so it rounds it off a bit. I'm going to go to advanced. This is just for the text, by the way. And I'm going to give it a little bit of padding all the way around. I'm going to go about 10. No, we'll go with 15. OK, so just a little bit of padding there, just so it all sits within there. OK, and again, have a think about your content and what you're doing. OK, right. So at the moment, we will now have when we view it, we have the text at the top. We have the text in the middle and we have that. I think this needs a little bit more work, don't you? So let's just go back to our styling. Let's go back to the typography and I'm going to make the weight of this be about five. No, in fact, we'll make the text on here darker. There we go, like that. OK, so that's just a little bit more readable in terms of how it's looking on the page. The one problem, though, is that the the, the name and the box are still very close to the top and bottom edger. Edger, the border. So if I go to the section, I go to advanced, OK? Here's now where I'm going to add in a little bit more breathing space. So I'm going to say, give me about a hundred from the top. Let's just set uh, the right to be zero and the left to be zero. But I want hundred from the top and the bottom. Um, yeah, we'll go with hundred from the bottom as well. And I'm going to hit update. And I'm going to go here. And can you now see we have breathing space at the top and bottom? And because as we added in content. Do, 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 Natalie on the right hand side, where is she? She's she's actually over there, she's just up here. She is now, you can actually see her a bit better now on the screen. Now we can play around with the placement. By the way, her name is not Natalie, okay? It's just a name that just came to mind. Right, so Natalie Sawyer, if we go to the section and we go to style, her position at the moment is default. I could go with center, center. Now she's completely in the center. But how does that look? Well, not as good as the last one, I think. I think original was much better. We could also go for top center. So it's a bit like that. OK, that's kind of better. But now we're covering over her glasses. What about if we go for right center? Or is it center right? Yeah, center right. No, not center right. Top right. Top left even. That's now pushed her over there. But when we view it on the page, I think that works best. And I think that for me is probably a better layout. OK, attachment, scroll or fixed. Now, watch what happens if I go for scroll. OK, nothing is going to happen. Basically, look, you move your mouse up and down. She stays where she is. What about if you go for fixed? Now, as I move up and down, OK, she actually the image actually stays fixed and the text goes up and down to so watch. Look at that. 
So now as we scroll, I mean, it will move more when we've got more content below the page. But look, as you scroll up and down, the wording goes up. And I think that's a lovely, lovely effect to have. The last two things I would say you do is make sure there is no repeat. So you don't get a tiled effect on a really big screen. But also for your size, just set it to be cover like that. What? This is like, even this is now looking super, super good. If you go for contain, you're going to get empty white space on the left, right, top and bottom. If you go for cover, we now got that effect and that, that's kind of okay, but I prefer her to be more on the right hand side. So let's put her on the, uh, let's go for center left, center default even. No, oh no, sorry. Because of the image, because she's very much in the center, she is going to kind of appear very much in the center there. So we are slightly restricted as to how much I can move that. Okay, but we're just going to leave it as center, center for now. No, not center, center. Oh, this is where you are very easily going to play around to get it looking the exact right way. Yeah, okay, we'll just go with that for now. Okay, so Natalie Sawyer, award winning architect. And it kind of looks cool because she's looking down at her text there, isn't she? Oh, she's looking down that way. She's looking at her text there. Okay, right. Now let's add in some further content, okay? Because, hey, this is what this is about, a portfolio. Let's now add in um, another section over here. This is going to be just one entire section, right? In fact, no, before we do that, let's just review how this looks on a mobile. Remember I said, do this each time you do a section. Don't leave this to the end. So mobile view, 378. So now what we have is this huge, humongous image and the text just goes, doo -doo 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 -doo. see what I mean by leaving it to the end. Do it now. So let's now go into the section, okay? The problem we've got is that column one over here is currently 40% and column two is 60%. Why? Because we copied the section above. So I'm now going to say that column one should be 100%. Column two, which has absolutely zero content in at any way, I'm going to go to advanced. Watch this. I'm going to go to responsive and I'm going to say hide it on the mobile. That column will not exist on the mobile view. It has no purpose to exist. We go into our section. We go to advanced. It is doing 100 pixels top, 100 pixels bottom. So I'm going to say, actually, we only need to have about 50 from the top and 50 from the bottom. But the text is now too close to the, the borders left and right. So 15 on the left and 15 on the right. So we have a bit of breathing space. What about our text? The style at the moment is a free. I think the free is now too big for the mobile view. So I'm going to change this to be about, uh, sorry, put it on EM. I'm going to change this to be uh, 2, maybe 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. There we go. That's better. And for this second one here, style, I'm going to change this to be EM again to 1.5. Yeah, that's pretty good. And for the styling of the highlighted text, well, we go to text op, uh, typography, we go to EM, and I think one point, I think 1.2 is pretty much okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And so we still get the highlighted text animation coming in. The problem though, look, the problem though is the image. We now cannot see Natalie whatsoever. And this is where you have to you have to now consider maybe is do you still want to have uh, Natalie present in there in the image or, or do you want to have a separate image? Do we now remove the image? So if you go to the set, the um, the um, the style, the section and the style, the image is still there. OK, but what I can now do is put in a completely different image, which is resized differently, which could work better. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit update. And this is why we added in two images into WordPress. Let's just go back a step, OK, after updating and go to our media library. Let me find that image again. The image for the desktop is the first lot. The second lot, which sits above, is for the mobile. So here's the image. 1920 by 1080 pixels. So we're going to scale this now. And what we're kind of worried about is the height in effect, OK? I'm going to make this be about 600 in height. Sorry, I put it in the width one then. Put it in there. That has now scaled the image to be 600 in height. Okay, slightly shrunk it. When you've done that, 
okay? And this is saved, okay? Come out of it and go back in, because if you don't go back out and in, it might revert back to the 1920 by 1080. Now we edit the image again. Now I'm gonna click crop, and now I'm just gonna shrink this, and if we see down here, you'll see the sizing at the bottom there. Can you see that, the width? I'm not touching the height, leave the height as it is, but I'm now touching the width. So I'm gonna get this to be about 450, and I'm now gonna do this. So I'll have her there, but she's a slightly more to the right-hand side of the page, so it's a bit like that, okay? And I'm now going to say crop, like that, and hit save. So what we've now done is created a copy of the image that we can use. Let's close, close that out. Let's go to our pages, all pages, and we're gonna hit go to our home. You don't need to go to edit. You go to edit with Elementor, because we're now edit with Elementor. If you hit edit, just hit the blue button, edit with Elementor. Right, so if we view this on a mobile screen now, again, so three, seven, eight, like that, and I click on the section, and I go to style. A lot of people don't do this. You go to style, I'm gonna click here, and I'm now gonna pick my modified image, if I can find it. There she is, yep. So we're just gonna click that and click insert. So now we have a modified image, and already you can see the layout's change. However, we still can't see her. So I'm gonna go with center right. Now we can see her. The only issue I have though is that the layout now is a little bit messed up because her face is still not fully visible, if that makes sense. So this is where I'm now gonna just go over to this highlighted text, okay? Um, I would probably say though that in honesty, you probably never wanted to have your text with that many words. I'm just gonna get rid of some of the wording anyway. In fact, let's get rid of more wording. It is a bit overkill, isn't it, how much I added there? Yeah. I mean, you would never have that much text present on your page anyway. So let's just have it like that. Okay, so now we can see her a little bit better. I'm gonna go to this highlighted text. I'm gonna go to advanced, and I am now going to increase, unlink it, I'm gonna increase how far is that text from the award-winning architects. And as I do that, her face becomes bigger, like so. One problem we do still have though is now this text here isn't very visible. So I think what we should do is change this to be a white color. And I think we should do the same for the bottom as well. And then just test that and see how does it look on the desktop. So we have Natalie Sawyer, award-winning architect, and then we have the text below. Let's click update. So if I now view this on a proper screen, that is the layout. Ignore the menu at the top, all right? We're gonna play around with that later. But now we have a bit of a layout. Again, pick your images carefully, how you're gonna lay it out and what you're gonna do there. Okay, so if I now view this on a mobile, sorry, not a mobile, on a desktop, we still have the original image, okay? We have this scrolling effect with the background, but now the text for the top isn't so good. Ah, we're just not, we're just not winning this argument, are we? So now I think we're gonna to have to mess around with this a little bit. So I would say that what you might wanna now do is probably consider is um, just doing some something completely different maybe with the text. And I would say that what you could do is go over here and add in a bit of a text shadow. I would say make the blur be about three. I would say maybe darken that a little bit like so, like that. Maybe increase the blur just a little bit. And then um, just do the same for the bottom one down here. So add a bit of blur. Uh, darken it a bit and you can be quite prescriptive by the way i'm just gonna i'm, just, I'm not gonna do this pe perfectionist right but you could also mess around with the tap the shadow so you could say that the horizontal is more than the real vertical look you could really mess around with it but i'm just gonna put this as zero and zero for now so when i hit update we now move this on a mobile screen the wording is fine there three seven eight okay and it's looking okay for us. I mean, if you wanted it to overlap so it's not going across the face, again, you could do that. So we have Natalie Sawyer. Um, I, I would say the text edit on here is not so good. In fact, let's just, uh, there we go. Yeah, that's better. Right, so we can read her name, award-winning architect, and we got some words that highlight in like that. Let's now add in another section. So we're gonna go down and we're gonna add in one column, or one section, one house, with one column, which is one room. 
just move myself out the way there. Okay, right. Um, then we are going to add in some a feature from QI add-ons, which I think is brilliant. It's called interactive links. We're going to drop this in, okay? This interactive link is going to be full width, okay? In fact, it's not full width, sorry. No, it is full width. It's full width because we want it to stretch across the screen. We have item one and item two, okay? So let's just let's just go into here, okay? So this section here is going to be no gap. The height is going to be zero, okay? And we'll mess around with the padding if we need to mess around with it, okay? Now let's click into the interactive links. I'm going to get rid of item two and just have item one so I can mess around with it. The layout is we could have a background color. We could have an inline like that, so we have all the text showing. We can have split like that, or we can have standard. I'm going to go for background for a reason, okay? Now, if we go to um, the item one, okay, we could add a link in here. So when you click it, it takes you to another page. I don't want it to link to anything, so it won't be a link. But I am going to call the title, and I'm going to say um, architecture. OK, and the text for this, actually, there won't be any text. There will be no text. So what's the point? You could add text. I'm just letting you know if you want to add text, you could do. And I'm then going to add in an image. And I'm going to add in this image here of her um, doing some drawings, maybe like this. Here we go. Here's a good one. Right. So we're going to get a nice little drawing here. Position of the image, left or right. Well, we're going to leave it on the left. It doesn't actually change much there. The image offset. Well, if I type in 100, that isn't going to really change anything either. So again, I'm going to leave that as it is. What about the image width? Well, it's going across the full section. So again, you can leave that as it is, okay? Now, at the moment, that image you can't see fully because there's nothing else in there. But if I go to um, style, this is where we can start to mess around with the styling and how the content's going to look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this title to be black like that. And I'm going to um, uh, the typography, I'm going to do as Montserrat again. Montserrat. Okay, and I'm going to do EM and I'm going to go for a two. In fact, no, we'll go for a three. No, we'll go for a two. Okay, so sorry, not the text. What am I doing? It's the title one. Sorry. Go for the title. Go for the title. Uh, and we're going to go in for a three. No, we'll do it. No, yeah, we'll go with three. So we've got a nice big bold header coming in there. The weight of it will make a 500. We'll leave it as that. And I don't think we're going to mess around any more with the typography of that, with the title. No. Okay. Uh, text margin title, leave that as zero as well. Okay, cool. List style. Well, this will become important when we actually have a few more items in there. Okay. So at the moment, we've got an image. This will become clear in a moment. Just stay with me on this, OK? I'm now going to go over to advanced, OK? And if I go over here and I type in a hundred, it adds an insulation. That's why I wanted it to be full width. We don't need any insulation, insulation, whatever. And if I add in a hundred for the margin, there is now dead space between section two and section one. If you want dead space, fine, go for it. If you don't want dead space, don't add it in. OK, so I've got in this section here. Now, the interactive link, we have item one. I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate it again and duplicate it again. And each time I do it, the images get bigger and bigger. Now, I'm going to change architecture to be um, work. And I'm going to change the image here to be her sat down like so. I'm then going to go to item two. And I'm going to change this one to be uh, support. I'm going to change this one to be um, her on the phone. OK, I'm going to go over to I mean, these, I'm just making this up as I go along, by the way. All right. I'm going to go for um, customer. Customer focus. I'm going to change this one to be like a customer, for instance. And I'm going to go to the very last one. And I'm going to change this one to be um, uh, innovative. Innovative. There we go. And we'll go for um, let's go with uh, let's go with this one here. There we go. We got innovative. There we go. And we hit update. Right. 
What do you think is gonna happen now when we start to hit these buttons? Well, look, as I hover, it's changing. This is, I love this. I seriously love this, what QI add-ons I've done here. Let's now go to style, list style. I can now start to add in a bit of spacing because I want to see more of the imaging, right? What about the width of them? Well, yeah, we want the width to be um, uh, fully 100%, to be honest, so leave that as 100%. A bit of spacing over there, okay? That at the moment, though, it is going all the way to the right, I have to be admitted, so we may have to modify um, the list padding. So on the left, um, I'm going to add in about 100 like that, uh, just to be away from the left-hand side. Hover style. Do we want underline? Do you want a line through? I'm going to say underline is fine. Um, underline offset, you know, the thickness. I'm going to say make it a zero, in fact. No, let's make it a one. So there is a little bit of a line coming in there, okay? So now, if I just view this, if I hit update and view this section now, okay, look, as we scroll up, can you see how, like, the text moves over the image and she appears? Work. Support. Customer focus, innovative. I mean, support is not very clear. So think about the images and the font and the color you're going for. But, you know, that's, I mean, come on, that is, that's pretty neat. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a, such a fantastic feature. Well done, guys. You did super well there. Right, next section. I'm going to add in another section now. I'm going to do in, uh, in fact, I'm just going to copy in this section, totally duplicate it. In fact, no, what are we doing? Did we check on the mobile? No, we didn't. So let's go to the mobile view, 378. What happens when we scroll down now? So now you can see here that the text is way too far over to the right-hand side. So for the text margin now, if I go to the list style, okay, I'm now gonna modify this to be basically, uh, well, it'll be a tiny bit away, uh, like, that, there we go. So I've modified it now for the mobile. So the mobile padding, it comes in a little bit, but not too much. What about the styling for a text? Well, we've got to change it for the mobile, haven't we? So we're going to put in a EM2. EM2. Yeah-ish, you know, I'm, I mean, obviously you're going to have to mess around with the font and the, the because the color there isn't the greatest color I've picked there. Um, so you may want to think about a different color scheme that we go for, but I think that works. And uh, the list size, the list width, we want it to be 100%. There we go, 100%. So if we were now viewing this on the mobile view, look, as you, as you move up and down, without having to click, you just scroll, as you move your finger up and down, it's gonna change the images. Neat, neat feature. And again, get it right for the mobile and test as you go along. Dead, dead important. Right, let's now do in our Next section. So this is going to be where we now showcase what this what the skill sets are. So I'm going to just um, drop in a radial progress bar like that. At the moment, it is huge. 75%. What's going on here? So I'm going to go to my section and I'm going to add in a little bit of padding. OK, so I'm going to add in about uh, 20 padding from the top and bottom. But I am now also going to move this section to be away from the section above. So I'm going to say, give me about 100 pixel space from the section above, right? Let's now click back into this radial progress bar. So item one, okay, there's going to be um, text and we're going to say um, since 2010, okay? And the title is going to be, um, uh, um, I'm going to put, um, uh, I'm going to say four national awards like that, okay? And I'm going to say the percentage number, in fact, percentage number is not, no, 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 sorry, don't do that, don't do that, not national awards. I'm going to say um, uh, um, um, X, um, um, design level. I don't know, you're going to have to think of something here. We'll leave it at 75%. I'm going to just put since 2010. I haven't thought about this, have I? And I'm now going to go to style. I'm going to say the active color is the red color. The inactive color we will leave as a faint outline. And the thickness, well, well, we'll increase the thickness. So we'll make it about, uh, we'll make it 10 for the thickness, okay? And the inactive line, well, we'll leave that as a slight, um, a, a slightly smaller line. The circle fill color, in fact, 
of the circle fill color, we will make a slightly a gray color like so. So we get a bit of an outline. No, we'll leave it as white, leave it as white. And the text style is where we're just gonna now make it a orange, uh, the pink color. And we'll go for Montserrat. I mean, this is great with Elementor, the stuff you can do. We'll make it a two for inside and the weight will make a 500. Okay, so we have uh, so we have design level since 2011. We will leave the um, the title color we've done. We will we will make it a little bit closer to the edge of the circle. The typography for the text, which is the 2010. Again, we'll go for month. Surat. We'll go at EM and we'll go with 1.5 like that. The weight we'll leave is about 400 and we'll leave that as it is. And what about the number color inside there? So I'm now gonna make that a red color as well. And we will now make that a bit more of a bigger, bolder color. So we're gonna go with the typography and we're gonna go for Mont Mint Montserrat. The EM we are gonna make about three and the weight we will make it a bit bigger at 600 and we will update that. So that will update in a moment. Okay, don't worry about why it's not updated yet. So just gotta click in, there you go, right? Now at the moment, that is super, super, super big. So I'm gonna to go to my section layout and I'm gonna make this a boxed width. And the box width is gonna be 1,200. It does not go beyond 1,200 in width. I'm now gonna duplicate that column and I'm gonna duplicate the column again. So what we now get is three circles, but they're all exactly the same. So let me just get rid of what I just did, okay? I'm gonna go back into this column, right? Not the section, not the item, the column. I'm gonna go to advanced and I'm gonna say, I need to have within that column, I need about 50 pixels of breathing space inside of there, okay? What I now do is I will duplicate that column and I will duplicate that column now. And what I now get is three levels. Now you will change the content and you will change the number. Let's just go to this one and change this one to be uh, 34. And this one we will change to be uh, 89. So what will happen is you can have different levels and different styles. Now this still for me is a little bit big. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna shrink this to now be about 800. It's okay to have a slightly different thinner size as long as your columns go like that and not <laughs> like that. You have, you have a central like covered column, but then the sizes can go in a little bit maybe if you wanna emphasize something, okay? Change the size, change the styling. Look, I'm just showing you how it works. If I now view this on a page, we've got our words, we've got our text, look, I'm sorry, I'm, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't made the font look extra special or anything like that at the moment, but I'm just showing you how you, this works. And then we got some like, well, when you refresh the page, of course. Actually, let's not do that because I don't, did I say, no, let's hit update. Hit update, don't forget to hit update. So what you will have is as the page loads, these items are gonna start to appear for you. I am just gonna go in here though, because I do think though that this bit here at the moment, um, I think it could, I think this, I think the links over here could be a little bit, um, I think they are a little bit too close to the top for my liking. I don't know how you feel about that, but I do think that um, that needs to have a bit more breathing space inside uh, of the content. So I'm just gonna go to list style and uh, padding, there we go. So I'm just gonna give it a bit more breathing space on the top and the bottom. Cause I just think it looked a little bit, just a bit too close for comfort. I don't know how you felt, but I felt it definitely did. And I'm gonna do the same over here as well. Just make sure the padding is, uh, I'm gonna go about 50 on the top and 50 from the bottom. Cool, that's better. Yeah, that's better, that's better now. There's a bit of breathing space from the top and before you get to the radial. So that now could become like one of our areas where we're gonna talk about services. Now let's add in, now let's just double check how does this look on a mobile. So on the mobile screen, okay, that's kind of okay. 
it is it is quite big, I would say, and it's not a bad thing maybe to go to the layout and say make this a fifty percent layout, and then obviously change your font, your typography to fit accordingly, and then have fifty percent again here. So you could have like two by one or two by two or whatever. But I'm just showing you what you could have done. Then I'm going to just undo that to put it back again. By the way, undo you can do with Control Z or Command Z, or you can hit the undo um, history icon here, and you can undo. I mean, literally, I can go all the way do 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 to when I started the page. <sighs> all right, so super super cool that what you can do there. Right, let's just go back over here. And what we're now going to do is add in a little bit more detail about the services that are offered. So I'm going to go in and add in a, I'm going to duplicate this section just because it's got all the padding in. I'm going to get rid of the content, get rid of that column and get rid of that column. So we only have <clears throat> one column. Okay. Just make sure. Uh, yep. Yeah, so we've got 20 and 20 at the bottom there for the margin there we go it's 100 from the top which i'm okay with and we're now going to use another feature which is called i think it was called uh, item showcase so let's drop that in this is a cool cool feature okay let me drop in this image of our friend in fact i drop it in from here because the ones at the top off of the mobile get rid of all of these so i only have one item here I'm going to get rid of the icon and what I can now do is basically change the text however I want, you know, so it'll be service or skills or, you know, you can have whatever, Sersky, Sersi, but you can have your skills over there and you can have your description like that. You could have a link. You probably might not want to do a link. One of the problems is the image is coming through quite small. And the reason for that is because the original image that I brought through and I'm going to get deleted here. It was a horizontal 1920. So what I need to do is just convert that. So again, we're going to go back into our media library. Okay. And we're going to find that image. There it is. We're going to click edit. I'm going to click crop. And I'm now going to just crop this to be not super tight, but I want it to be like that. All right. When I click crop and I click save. So I'm hoping that's now going to come through bigger. Well, it better. Then we go to pages, all pages, and we go to edit with Elementor. And we scroll down, okay, and it says here, warning, image, blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, let me now put through our image, the new one we just created, and we're gonna insert that. And there we go, we now have a bigger image. So what we can now have is we can have our skills, and we can say what we want about it there. OK, and we can duplicate it like so, duplicate it, duplicate it. So what then happens is we have a bit more coming in about her and we have some skills levels showing. And like you can basically have animation or no animation. You're going to go in now and change the color scheme, your typography, um, how it basically appears and all of that. Um, you know, so I, I'm not going to like go over the top with every little feature on here, but this is like a pretty neat thing. What you might wanna do though, is before we even get here, is you might wanna put something like at the top, put a header in, maybe something like this and say uh, skills. And then what you're gonna do is you would then pick your font and your type. Now, I've already gone over picking Montserrat and all of that. Pretend I've done Montserrat again, over and over again, okay? So you're gonna go over and do a lot of this. Now, the spacing at the top here for this widget, there is quite a lot. So I'm just going to try and see, can we reduce that? So if we go into the section. I'm going to get rid of the padding here. And I'm going to get rid of the padding there as well. OK. And in terms of the column. There we go. So there we go. It's a little bit bigger now because it had the padding from the section above because we duplicated it. So now we have like skills and skills and etc. etc. Now, what we could now do is add in another section. Or we should check it on the mobile. I keep forgetting that, don't I? Always forget, never forget, check on the mobile. So now when we go down to here, we can clearly see we've got the header, we've got this layout, but the image now is not kind of showing. So the item showcase, when you get to look at it on a mobile, it is not going to give you what you thought you were getting. Um, that's a little bit annoying, I have to say. 
but it doesn't completely do that. But you are going to get the skills just without the image. What what you really want to be worried about is just going in and making sure you've got 15 padding for the section and 15 for the left. So it's not bang up against the left and right because that's going to annoy everyone, okay? So again, you could do something like this. And what I would say you do though, at this point, because you're now missing the image, look, the image is not there, right? It's gone because it's not showing it. What I would say you do is you over here, right? Just before we get to maybe, you can do it below or above, over here, I would add in, sorry, I didn't mean to add in an inner section. You would add in an image. You would add in that image we just created, okay, um, here. You will obviously have a resized mobile version, right? You're not gonna put in that image, right? You'll have a resized mobile image, right? Okay, remember what I did, scaled it and all of that. Okay, you're then gonna just set the size, the pixel width to be about, I don't know, uh, 400. No, 400 is too big. I would probably go for something like that. So it's about 180 and set the maximum to be 180 as well. And then what you do this image over here, you click the image, you go to advanced, you go to responsive and you say, hide this on the desktop and the tablet, right? So when you're looking at it on a mobile, it's there. When you look at it on a desktop, it is there, but it's grayed out, because it's not visible, because it's here. So watch what happens when I do this. Look, the image is gone. It's there for the edit screen, but you can play around with it. So if an image disappears because of the way responsiveness works, you can add in another version somewhere else, okay? So not everything is lost, okay? So we've got like um, a bit of text at the top, We've got some kind of like other information being displayed here. Skill sets or what they're good at or what their experience is. Some of the skills they've got over here. And then I would say what we might now want to do is just add in some testimonial. So I would say that we take a copy of, um, I basically take a copy of that and I just uh, paste it in like that and get rid of the contents. Let's get rid of that. Let's change this to say uh, reviews, testimonials, whatever you want to call it. Let's get rid of the feature that was in there. Let's go over here. And if we type testimonial, we have different types of testimonials you can use. I'm going to use one of these ones from QI add-ons because that's what we're using here at the moment. And so we have this style. So we could go in here and increase this now to be 1,200. In fact, I think this was one, I think we need to increase this back over here. Yeah, this layout was meant to be 1,200 as well. Ah, there you go, that's better. So now we can add in loads more skills. In fact, let's add in a few more skills here. Duh, duh, there we go. So we get a few more skills coming in now for our wonderful architect. And then over here, we can now start to add in and you can modify here your text your content, you know, you're gonna go in and change your text and the color of the eye, the quote mark, the color of the text, the spacing. You can start to mess around with so much of this, all right? Um, the background color, all of that. Brilliant, brilliant testimonial section over there. And then what you wanna end up with then at the bottom is I think a form. So let's just double check how this looks in the mobile view. And that looks, that looks fine. I mean, the arrows are a little bit close, I have to say, you know, over here. So let's just go over here. Now let's check the navigation size on the mobile. So I'd say, let's make the arrows there. And I would say the width, um, they're a bit close for my liking. I have, to, I have to be honest. I am being honest here. They're a bit close for my liking, but it's, it's not the end of the world, okay? And to be honest, you could even just get rid of the icons completely. They're not even there, right? Because people kind of know to slide, don't they? Because it's got the dots at the bottom. So we'll, we will take it off. Below that, we're now gonna add in a contact form. So let's just duplicate this bit here, duplicate. And we're gonna call this uh, contact. Contact us, get in touch. Um, let me know what you like and don't like. Tell me how I can help you, make a booking. Now, what we're gonna do here is get rid of this. And we're going to go over here and we're going to type in contact. So QI add-ons actually give you a contact form layout modifier. So if I drop this into here, like so, we now have this 
slightly weird looking contact form. If I just go to this section here and I change this to be about 700 or even uh, 700, yeah, no, we'll go for 500. We now have a slightly better layout. Um, we can stretch the section, which won't do anything by the way. Sorry, it's because I'm in the wrong section. So we go over here. So we're using contact form one and here's where we can start to do the style, the buttons, the color of the buttons, uh, the font color, uh, you know, what, what goes in the button, what happens when you hover over it. So maybe it changes color like so. Um, is there a border color? Um, what's the border radius? So we can make it more rounded if we want, or we can make it completely solidly square like that. Or you could have it like um, just a tiny bit rounded or mega rounded. Well, to be honest, 250 is normally all right. 25 is as well. You can start to mess around with the styling and the layout of it. So there is a way you can do that. Elemental Pro gives you the contact form and tons and tons of stuff you can do with it. Check out the, the contact form seven. You've installed it in WordPress. You would go into it basically, let me show you over here. You would go to um, contact, you go to contact forms. You would create a new one, add new. We'll just edit the one we've got here. And all you're gonna do like is like, um, I've said, okay, I want the name field. I want the email field. Um, I want a, um, I want a checkbox. So the name of this will be um, uh, um, type of service. And the options will be um, um, plans, um, site visit, um, ideas, you know, stuff like that. And then um, once that's done, it is a required field. And then what you're going to do is we're going to insert that tag, which is there. Just delete that like that. In fact, we'll put that below the, we'll put that above the message bit like that. So what we're missing is, uh, I'm just going to add in a label and I'm going to type in a purpose of um, purpose of no no service um, uh, service requested. I preferred the elemental forms. You know, trust me by far. Right, let's go to pages. All pages. Go back to edit with elemental. Okay, and we're going to scroll down, and there we go. Purpose of visits. Now we're just going to go over here and go to styling because what we do need to do is just slightly mess around with the layout. So you can see here that we have um, form space. So if I do the bottom one like that, it creates a bit of space between the one above. And also if I do a bit from the top, it creates a bit of space from the header as well. So you, you do wanna make sure you've got it looking quite clean and easy to understand. Um, input padding, is there any, um, I would say, let's go for about 10 for padding. There's settings here for you, okay? So not even with the checkbox, space between. Um, the input size, how big is it going to be, um, the margins as well. So I would say on the right hand side, I would increase that a bit. You know, so you can mess around with it. Okay, I'm not saying you can't, but Elemental, Elemental Pro Forms is so much better. Anyway, look, so that's we've done that. Now, what the last thing we really need to add is a footer. The footer, in essence, is just going to be a section where you're just going to put, I mean, and rather than me creating it, I'm sorry if it feels like I'm cheating. But rather than me creating it, let me just show you what a footer looks like. So we go to blocks and we go to footer, right? Let's just go for a simple footer. Let's go for a simple footer. Footer, none of them are simple. They're all complicated. No, they're not all complicated. Let's just go for this one, okay? Your footer is just gonna be a section and you might have two, three, four, even just one column. And inside the column, you're gonna drop header, text, social sharing icons, you know, address, contact number. You might even add a contact form into the footer. Okay, you can do so much things, but all it is is just basically like showcasing a bit more. There might be further details. It might be that you are an approved architect. You're part of a national scheme. You've got an award. You want to put a logo in there. Or maybe you've got other websites, so you want to put links into them. You know, all rights reserved. You know, who made it? Made by Web Squadron. You know, whatever, stuff like that. So. That is something you can do. I'm not going to spend too much time on that, okay? The main reason why is because I want to come back to revisit this bit at the top. This was dead, dead important. 
So let's just go over to WP Admin. QI add-ons has got really, really good. I've only just half scraped the barrel on some of what we could do here, but they have got some fantastic, fantastic features and I would definitely recommend you use them. Right, so now let's sort out the menu. Now, first thing we're gonna do is gonna connect this to items and then we're gonna mess around with it and make a duplicated version, which will look totally different for the mobile and different for the desktop, but they will have the same functionality. Now, at the moment, we have, 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 we have home, which is at the top of the website. If you click home, you want it to be at the top, right? So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna to go to home, and I want this to go to the top, right? It's gonna automatically go to the top of the website. That's pretty simple and clear. Okay, we're gonna click update. That's the link. Now for services, I need it to go down to the services section, which will be, well, um, I would probably say it probably needs to come down to skills even. In fact, should it be skills? In fact, we haven't even got the same titles, have we? We've got, we've got review. <laughs> we've got contact as review, skills, and then I think this is like experience. So let me just change these headers now. God, the beauty of doing things on the fly, hey? We're gonna call this one experience. We'll change this one to be uh, skills, reviews and all that, yeah. So experience, I want that to kind of skip down and get to this section over here. And what I'm gonna do though, is just make a duplicate of this and I'm gonna pick this up like, so, and I'm gonna take it up. I'm gonna move this widget to actually be over here. So it's now above the content. I'm gonna just go over here, change this to be zero. And now I'm just gonna create another section like so, and just drop this into here like that, and then make this one be a hundred from the top, okay? A hundred from the top there, so skills, okay. In fact, this is not skills. Experience, there we go. So we've got experience, then we get skills, and then we get that. So please don't be afraid of modifying things on the fly as you do it. It's okay, it doesn't hurt anyone, all right? So right now, for it to go to experience, we have to use what's known as a menu anchor. So it knows that when I click it, it needs to go down the page. If I type in menu, I'm gonna get anchor. I'm gonna call this experience. It is dead important you get, you remember the spelling and the whether there's capitals or not. This is very, very important. Okay, this is called experience. I'm just going to now go down here and above skills, I'm gonna drop in another menu anchor. So like, so, so we're gonna drop in menu anchor there. And this one we're gonna call skills. I'm doing it all in lowercase though to keep it simple and easy for me to remember. I'm gonna drop in another menu anchor. It's pretty repetitive this, isn't it? So we're just gonna call it reviews, okay? And then we're gonna to get to the contact form and we might as well add in another menu anchor. Right, like so. There we go, menu anchor and we're gonna call this one contact. Right, that's dead simple. We added in menu anchors, we just gave them an ID. I now go to the top and over here in my icon list, got something on my screen there. Is that something on my screen? Yes, there was. I thought, what's going on? Right, we go over here to experience and I'm gonna link it to hashtag experience. All right, not hashtag YouTube, hashtag whatever, it's a hashtag to the link, skills, well, that's gonna be a uh, hashtag skills. What about reviews? Well, that'll be hashtag reviews and contact. Well, that'll be hashtag contact, right? So watch what happens now when I'm viewing the page. If I go over here and I type contact, we go to contact. If I scroll all the way back to the top and I click experience, it goes to experience. So it's quite, I think this is just really neat in how it operates, right? It allows you to have a one page flowing layout. The problem is though, we're missing a button on the right hand side. Now I have got another video for that, okay? And I will put a link to it in the description so you can go and view it. And that's how do I put in a button that's gonna take me all the way back to the top. Or I could show it to you now. Why don't we just show it to you now, hey? Because um, I suppose you do wanna know what it is, right? So let's just add in a button that takes us back to the top. So I am going to now, add in above the logo, I'm gonna add in a menu anchor above the logo like this. 
and I'm going to call it top like that. Okay. Now what I will do is uh, at the very in, in the very top again, I'm now going to add in a button. I'm just going to drop in the button here. And I'm going to call this button. I'm going to say, uh, in fact, we're not going to say, we're not even going to have any text. Okay. And we're going to give it an icon. And I'm going to type in chevron. And I'm going to go for this icon here just to go back to the top because I think it's pretty blatant what it is, right? It's going to be in there. I'm going to put it as the right aligned, the style for the button. Again, look, you can modify the colors and whatever you want to do, but I'm not, I don't want to spend too long on this, okay? And I'm going to, um, I'm going to get rid of the padding and I'm now just going to control the padding a bit and just say 10. But the, I don't know why, this always gets me wondering why the right align has to be smaller in terms of padding. The right padding, sorry, has to be smaller. But anyway, we're going to have this here. Oh yeah, sorry. Don't put it in column one because that was only one column. My mistake, put it in its own column. Just one column on its own. It doesn't matter what it is because that column will actually disappear out of view. Do not worry about that, okay? It's going to be a full width. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, because um, actually there's no content, no gap, and the height is set to zero, okay? So it sits in its own col um, section, on its own, nothing in there. You click on it, you go to positioning. Right, so what we now do is we set the, we leave the width, but we set the position to be fixed. Um, it's already on the right, and what it's automatically done, I don't know if you can tell if I just move my mouse, but look, as I scroll up and down, it's forever positioning on uh, this side of the page. Now at the moment, it's, it's falling behind that image. We need it to come to the top, and I'll show you how you do that. But it's forever fixed over there. And I would say that that is absolutely fine. I would say, and I would say, put it as a percentage of about, uh, not zero, sorry, I'd go for 50. So it's in the middle of the screen. I'm gonna go over here now to advanced and I'm gonna give it a Z class of basically 99. Because what I want is I want that to always be in front. So if you start to give your items classes, one will be below two, two will be below three, three will be below four. Do you get it? There's a hierarchy. So at the moment, this is now in the middle or wherever it is. So let's click update. Just move myself back over here. Thanks for staying with us if you're still watching, by the way. And if you go to preview the changes now, we go to review, right? We go back to the top. We go to experience. We go back to the top. Contact. We go back to the top. So we now have a one page scroll system with a fixed button on the right hand side. It's just there. Look, I can almost touch it. Ding. Okay, and then we have a bit of wording. Now, I haven't used all of the QI add-ons. I haven't gone massively into depth into every single styling advanced feature. We have other videos and loads more that go in depth into that. See the course we got, which is for free, you know, individual videos with different things. But if you work on this methodically and you're very careful about your layout and how you present, you can have a really, really good website. But we still need to test on the mobile because I know the, the header at the top still needs to be adjusted. So we have a button. Look, the button is always going to be there for us so we can jump back to the top. We still have this dodgy looking, um, basically just header, the way it looks, right? So first thing we're going to do, and this is going to sound a little bit weird as to why we're doing this, but stay with me because we're trying to achieve a one page layout where you don't have like a drop down menu appear like you would do on a website. We're trying to keep it really, really simple. You're not having a pop up menu pop up as well because you want it to be really quick and fluid. We're going to go over here to this menu or this icon list that we use the menu. We go to advanced and we're going to say hide on the mobile. Your brain's going, Meh. seriously, stay with me on this. We're then going to add in another section below, right? And it's going to be, um, Oops, sorry, there you go. One column, like that. One column, one section. For now, it will be more columns, but for now it's just one column, okay? The style with it will be uh, full width, it will be uh, no gap, and the height will be zero, okay? So it's a height of zero. So when we now view this on a mobile, you have the logo and the social sharing icons, but the menu is nowhere to be seen. And now you're thinking, what, I gotta scroll up and down now to see everything? No, we're getting there. We're getting there. So what we're now going to do into column one, I am going to add in 
a icon like so. And this icon, when I click it to change, is going to be the home icon. Let me move myself there. We insert it and it is automatically red. Great, it's following our color scheme. Okay, um, if we were to then, um, we are going to add in a link and the link for that will be, as you know, hashtag. Actually, there is no hashtag, is it? Because it's just, uh, in fact, we'll do hashtag top because it goes to, no, no, we won't do that. It's hashtag. No, it's hashtag top. Yeah, we'll go top because we want it to go back to the top. Okay, so now that goes back to the top. Underneath that, we're going to add in some text like this. And this text is going to say home. Again, you would style it accordingly, okay? You would do what you need to do. I'm going to go to this column, right? And at the moment, the default gap or spacing throughout Elemental is 20 pixels. I'm going to hit zero. So the home is now further up next door to it. Okay. I am going to just slightly shrink the size of this home symbol to be a little bit similar to the, the social sharing. There you go. Home. OK, and you might want to modify the color scheme you have here and the fonts. And when you go to the text, you know, um, you know, uh, what's the color of it and all of that. You can do that. You could put in a header as well if you want and shrink that down. I will let you decide on that. OK, I'm, I don't want to spend too long on doing that. I'm now going to make a duplicate. Sorry, I'm now going to add in a I'm, I'm now going to I'm going to make this. So one, two, three, four, five, five columns. They want each need to be 20%. So I've now shrunk the column width of that layout to be 20%. I'm then going to duplicate, uh, duplicate, duplicate, and I'm going to duplicate. So no matter how big, wide it is, it's always going to be 20%, 20%. This one here, let's change this. What would we pick for experience? I don't even know if there is one for experience in it. You can upload other icons, by the way, or find something that works for you, okay? Um, I'm going to go with school, like that, experience. Hey, doesn't that look like Hill Valley? Um, 88 miles per hour! Anyway, um, let's click the text. And this text we are going to call um, um, EXP, or experience. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is the home. That does actually need a URL. So that home there, I'm going to click this here and I'm going to type in um, top. OK, that goes to the top. We're going to go over to this one here and I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go to uh, hashtag experience. And you would have done this for every single one. I'm just showing you, though, OK, what, what you can do here. All right. So over here, we would have I'm not going to do all of these, by the way. You would have done skills. You know, you would have put. Well, let's just do it. Skills. Uh, reviews and it fits, it fits, it fits, and contact us. And you, oh dear, reviews, and then you would also do contact as well. X contacts, you don't want those kind of contacts. So, contact as well, and you're going to shrink your size and everything like that. And obviously, you're going to go in now and you're going to, um, you know, um, you're going to start to put down. The, the right kind of symbols, you know, so review. What, what could we go for review? There'll probably be one. Uh, testimonial? No, no, no. Actually, you want quote. There we go. You want quote, don't you? That's what you want. So quote. And then for the contact, I would say just go for mail, you know, stuff like that. Envelope. Envelope. That's what you want. You start to forget things, then you remember them. There we go. So you could have envelope. You could have something like that. Okay. Over here now, I'm going to go back into the section and for the margin and the padding, I'm just going to say, give me about uh, 10. No, go for five either side, just a bit of padding because we do need a little bit. OK, and um, on the bottom, actually, we don't need so much. I'll shrink that down to minus five. And from the top, I need a little bit of spacing from the top. Let's go with five. So look. Logo, icons. Now, because the icons are not taking up as much space, I can actually do this. So what I can do now is I can go over here and say this actually should be 70% uh, or even 65%. And the social sharing icon should be 35%. Uh, so when we now view this like that, we have something looking more like this. Obviously, play around, you know, with your margins and get things accordingly right. 
But let's just now see what happens, okay? So let's see what happens when we start to click on some of these icons. You click reviews and it goes down to the reviews. Sorry, did it go to three? Oh, no, sorry, there it is, yeah. You click the up button, it goes up. You click to contact, it goes to contact. There you go. You click to experience, it goes to experience. So it's basically doing what we asked it to do, right? Sorry, it's because I scrolled my mouse the first time I did that there a bit too quick. So we have like, we now have a menu system, which is looking different from, you know, your traditional drop down because we want it to be a very clear and simple one page viewing website, right? So this is a pretty funky way of how we can create a one page looking, smart looking portfolio website. So when you do preview here and you can see it on the, the so you have your desktop version, you know, with your images moving and everything and things bouncing in and all of that. And then you have your mobile version and it kind of like, you know, I mean, you can scroll down manually, you can just do it however you want to do. So I think that this is a pretty neat way of doing a website. And the very last thing I want to sh share with you really is, um, and please do like and subscribe and follow us, okay, to keep up to date with how we like to do things, is the one last thing I want to mention though, is that if you remember, there was a plugin called OMG F. You need to go into settings and what you now do is um, you need to now just basically say, um, uh, well, you, what you need to do is just scan your home page now. So what it's now going to do is it will now go through and it will pull out all of the fonts. Um, this is where, unless you have the pro version, you're not going to be able to optimize or locally load too many fonts um, into your system um, to help your website load efficiently, okay? And that's why I only picked Montserrat. I didn't do it for all of them after a while. I did it for the first load. When I said to you, right, you can do it yourselves. But what you would do is it's going to pull through all of the fonts that are present on your page. So Montserrat crops up. Roboto is there because I didn't do it for some of them. But what I would basically be doing is as long as you've got Montserrat, what you're going to do is you're going to unload all of them, right? Sorry, unload the italic. Sorry. Oh, what did I do that for? Right. So you're going to have all of them, right? You unload the italics because I didn't have any italics. And then I'm going to say I didn't. I never used 100. I never used 200. Did I use 300? No. Did I use 400? Yep, yeah, five. I think they were the only ones I used. Make a note of what you're using. And any you didn't use, you untick them, all right? And then you just hit save and optimize. That then means that when you're testing your website on PageSpeed Insights, it just helps a massive amount with regards, right, to your PageSpeed score. And I bet there's gonna be some of you out there that are probably wondering, well, what was the page speed score for all of that? You added on loads and loads of features there, bits of animation, things floating in and all of that. What does that mean? Well, look at that. For the desktop, 99%. But what about the mobile? 97%. So anyone out there that says Elemental adds too much bloat, Elemental Pro, if you use it carefully, does not add bloat. QI add-ons does not also add bloat. And I had plugins and stuff added on. Look, there's the website with the new menu item we added on as well. It is all there. The 4.3, that's part, that's my server kicking in, all right? You can't blame me for the server, okay? That happens, okay? But, oh, um, I haven't, by the way, I haven't done all of the images. Don't forget yet, I have to like, I did it for the very first image at the top, but the rest of the images I didn't add in a mobile version. So bear that in mind, okay? Make sure you do that. But if you're looking at this, okay, right? 97% on a mobile. We're not using WP Rocket. We're not using Nitro Pack. I'm not, I'm not paying for a premium optimization plugin. It can be done. Gotcha. So, hey, look, I hope this has helped you, especially anyone out there who wanted to create a one-page website. Yes, I talk too much. Yes, I go off on tangents, but I'm here to help you. QI add-ons, really, really neat features, especially for portfolio. I think it is... Brilliant. So um, look, for anyone out there that doesn't have Elemental Pro and they want to use complete free plugins to build their website, here you go. I hope you like, I hope you subscribe, ask us questions, reach out, we can help you, but I'll see you soon.